On the 2nd of April 1982, 600 Argentinian troops landed on the Falklands. The governor at the time, Rex Hunt, was heard to say, looks like the buggers mean it. The military government in Argentina did expect the British government to defend this far-flown British colony, but they were wrong. On the 21st of May, the British landed and they fought their way across the island to Mount Tumbledown, where the Argentine forces surrendered. The conflict claimed over 900 lives, but defended the Falklanders' right to determine their own sovereignty. To this day, Argentina maintains a claim over the islands, but the islanders remain staunchly British. Gary Clements was with the Royal Marines during the conflict. So this is where you landed, wasn't it? It was, just uh, behind us here, Phil, and actually on the other side of the, the bay over there was where I came ashore. Over there is where the hospital, the red and green life machine was. That, that's the famous building, yes, and uh, that's where we worked out up there, yeah. And uh, you can see just down in the harbour here, um, the boy is marking the antelope. Yeah, that's a war grave now, yeah. But this, of course, was known as Bomb Alley. This is where the, most of the ships was in here. Uh, I always get a, the hairs on the back of my neck sort of stand up when I come back to this place. And what did the locals think about you guys during the conflict? Oh, I think the, the locals here in uh, San Carlos itself probably had the biggest shock in the world. They woke up one morning and there was suddenly thousands of troops uh, milling their way around. So yeah, but they was more than pleased to see the British troops arrive, yeah. To the local people, it doesn't matter who you was, you could have been the bottle washer on board, you know, and you're accepted exactly the same because everybody had a part to play in this war. Um, 2007, for the 25-year thing, uh, a 2,500 population, we collected £80,000 in Stanley for the wow. local people. Wow, wow. That's yeah. impressive. Oh, yeah. Why don't we go and meet some? I'd love to. I'd love to. This is Liberty Lodge, set up as a place to stay for veterans wanting to come back with their families and revisit the islands. I'm going to cook up a great breakfast this bunch. For a hungry group like this, you can't go wrong. I'm going to do them a classic fry-up, so red lion, sausages, tea and bacon. That'll sort them out. OK, now this is a bit of a twist on what I would normally do at home. Rather than using butter, we'll make bacon -aise. That is mayonnaise, normal short-bought mayonnaise. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of mustard just to give it the whole thing a bit of kick. Crispy bacon, this is Red Lion crispy bacon here. All I've done is chopped it up very finely and cooked it, it's completely crisp. So a little bit of parsley in there, gives it a nice bit of colour. And then finally, my little sort of secret weapon. Here I've got mango chutney. Now, marmalade works really well as well, but you use it like a seasoning. So just a tiny little bit, just to sweeten everything and bring it all together. And then, just bring the whole thing together. So this will act a bit like the butter in the bread, but it'll also give it a nice bit of crunch and flavour. Right, you lot, come on. It's been great to meet all the people in my That was the main reason I wanted to come back down. Any of the guys that you were here with, one guy's here at the minute, he was uh, actually my drinking partner in the Navy. Um, he was actually allowed to drink back then, I wasn't allowed to drink, I had to drink the fat of it because I wasn't old enough. You're not a vet, are you? You're a local. No, I'm a local. What's yes. your involvement here? We own Mount Kent in the... You own Mount Kent? We owned it in the conflict. Oh, did you? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Can you remember much about that? Yeah. Like yesterday. Is it really? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was pretty frightening. That's when they first landed. And... Yes. You, you didn't know what was going to happen. They used to come in and with helicopters to the farm. Did they? Take care of Terence and the gunpoint. Did they? Through the house. Yes. Yeah, searching for the enemy. They realised that they were the enemy. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yeah. of course. Yeah. Well, the last night of May, yep. um, one of the ladies that was in the settlement at Green Patch with us rang up and asked for Terence to go up to her house. That's your husband? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And uh, he was away for about three hours. He came back and he said, You go up with your father and see what's at June and John's house. 
Yeah. So when I went up, these, this man walked out of the darkness and he said, hello, I'm a British soldier. <laughs> yes. Wow. And I said, well, am I glad to see you? And I threw my arms around him and said, would you stay with me? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He said, I'd love to, but I can't. <laughs> so how old were you when you actually been a cop at the start with? 21. That was my 22nd birthday mm -hmm. on May the 25th, right in the middle of it. And do you remember it? Very well. Really? Even now, with 30 years down the line? Very vivid, yeah. There was a family looking to just pour by a small piece of land to say that this is what they own that their son died fighting for. So I said to them, you can have a piece of land on the main farm or you can have this little island. Wow. So uh, they took the island. It's very kind. The soldiers at MPA um, made the plaque, brass plaque, and put it on a stone for us. And oh, wow. They came as well. And we had a service on them. It was very, it's nice. It's very kind. Yeah. Very kind. People. Not really. It's no, the least no. we can do. And, you know, we just like seeing veterans. We can help each one.